Okay, this is uh, chapter 6, video 7. It goes with section 5.6 in your book on direct variation. So we're going to take these notes together um, and then we'll do the practice in class. So direct variation is just a fancy way of saying proportional, which is what we've been studying and talking about this whole chapter. So this section isn't really anything new. Uh, it just has a fancy name, but just remember we're talking about proportional. Okay, so one way to tell, one thing we've been doing this whole chapter is looking for those arrows, right? Seeing if you can multiply by something every time. Um, so when we talk about direct variation, x is always multiplied by the same number each time. Okay, so one thing to think about when we talk about proportional or direct variation is if you can kind of find those arrows and say, oh, yep, every time looking at a chart or a table or points, every time x is always being multiplied by 2 or x is always being multiplied by 3. So those having that idea of those arrows is going to help us. So going back, proportional can mean a couple things. It can mean equivalent ratios. And it can also mean a constant rate. So we're going to kind of think about both of these things in this section. Equivalent ratios, all your ratios have to be equivalent, like we've done the whole chapter. And it also means a constant rate. If you have equivalent ratios the whole time, then you're going to have a constant rate of things. So for a table, this would mean that all ratios are equivalent in your table. Right? If I take any of my xy pairs in my table, they're all going to be equivalent. So obviously this means they're all proportional if I check them all. And the other thing, like we talked about, is that I'll have those arrows that work. Right, All my arrows going from x to y all have to be the same. They all have to match. Right, so maybe x is always being multiplied by 3, or x is always being multiplied by 4, or divided by 6, but they're all going to have to match. Okay, um, And then for an equation, all your proportional or direct variation equations will always be y equals something times x. And that something, that number, is the rate. Okay, This goes back to what we learned in chapter 3, y equals the rate times x. And in this case, we're not going to have any starting value. Our starting value is going to be 0. So I could say y equals the rate times x plus 0, but we don't bother to write that part whenever it's plus 0. So it's just y equals something times x. Okay, and what does this mean for a graph? Well, for a graph, we know it has a constant rate. So this means it's going to be a straight line. So all of your proportional or direct variation graphs will be straight lines. And the other thing right here, since they have a starting value of 0, they have to go through the point 0, 0. So they have to go through the origin. Okay. So that means your graphs, if I graph them here, could be a straight line through 0, 0 going up, or a straight line through 0, 0 with a negative slope going down. Those are the only two kinds of graphs that will be proportional or direct variation. Okay? And then this last thing here on this top notes part is constant of proportionality. You won't hear me say that very often, but it is in your book or if anyone else um, mentions it, you should know what it is. Constant of proportionality is the same thing as that rate. Okay? It's the same thing as the slope when you get into algebra or eighth grade. And it is this number in your equation, whatever x is being multiplied by. The number x is multiplied by. Okay, So constant of proportionality, the rate, the slope. Sometimes in algebra we say in the equation mx, it would be this part, whoop, it would be this part, the number multiplied by the x. So I want you to go back up to this box that we skipped. Really, really big idea for this whole section, the rest of the chapter really, is that the rate 
if we haven't said this already, the rate is always y divided by x. Okay, so if you're asked to find the rate, it's always y divided by x, and we're going to talk about that a lot in these examples, but have it filled in there so you can go back to it. All right, so the first examples. Tell whether x and y show direct variation. If they do, write the equation. Okay, so I'll do a couple. I'm looking to see if they're showing direct variation, which means are they proportional? Okay, well, we said we have to check all of these ratios like we've been doing. So as soon as I check these ratios and I get some that don't match, like 3 over 1 is not the same as 4 over 2, right? If I simplify these or divide these, they don't give me the same thing, then my answer is no. Let's check the next one. I kind of ignore the zeros because that doesn't give me a very good proportion. I can't really simplify it or divide it. So I'm going to uh, check the other ones. So I check all of these and I notice that, yes, 3 over 1, 6 over 2, 9 over 3, they all simplify to the same thing. So my answer is yes. Now it says write the equation. So we're going to do that together. We talked about how the equation up here is y equals the rate times x. So if I find the rate, which we said was always y divided by x up in this box, I'm going to come down here and say y divided by x, 1 over 3, or 2 over 6, or 3 over 9. All of these simplify to 1 third. That's my rate. So the equation would be y equals the rate times x, y equals one-third x. And what's cool is that that's what's happening to x every time. 3 times one-third is 1. 6 times one-third is 2. 9 times one-third is 3. So that's kind of what this arrow is doing every time to the x. Okay, I'm going to do one more, and then you're going to practice with the next four. Okay, so let's check these. Let's see, if I simplify this, negative one-third, negative one-third, negative one-third, when I just look at them and simplify. So no, I know my answer is yes, it's proportional or direct variation. Now I need an equation, which means I have to find the rate. The rate is always y over x. So I can take any of these, doesn't matter, and set it up, y over x. Okay, that's negative three. So my equation is y equals negative three x. So, you are going to finish the next four tables here. Decide if it's yes or no. Are they proportional or direct variation? And then if they are, see if you can find the rate by doing y over x and come up with the equation. Okay, so pause and try those tables. Okay, hope you actually did these. Let's check them. In this one, yep, they all simplify, so I know they're proportional. If I go to find the rate, y over x, 1 over 2, that's my rate, so 1 half, y equals 1 half x. In this one, when I look at all of these and simplify them, now they're going side to side, but it doesn't matter. I still compare these numbers, simplify them as ratios. They're not equal, so my answer is no. This one, yep, it does work, right? If I look for the arrow here, times 4, times 4, times 4, times 4, y equals 4x. And this one, if you're not careful, down here at the end, this one would have to be a negative for it to work. And because it's not a negative in the chart there, your answer is no. Okay? All right. So let's go on to equations for direct variation, right? We um, already said, how do you know if an equation is proportional? Well, it's going to be y equals the rate times x, right? Some number times x. If there's anything else in there, it's probably not direct variation. So a hint here is that it has to be solved for y. You have to be looking at an equation that says y equals, and then you can tell from there. Okay? So some things that are not direct variation or not proportional. Well, if it has an x squared or an x cubed or square root, that's not going to be direct variation. If it has something with x on the bottom, like this, dividing by x, that's not going to be direct variation. And finally, if it has anything like up here where we said it had to go through 0, go through the point zero, 0, so if it has any adding or subtracting, that's not direct variation either. Okay, so let's go through these examples. Get this out of the way. And decide if these are direct variation or not. Well, y equals something times x. Yep, that's exactly right. Direct variation, proportional. Y equals something 
times x. Here my rate or my slope is 1 7th, but yes, it works. It's proportional. x squared? Nope, not going to work. y equals something times x. Yes, here my rate is a negative 2, but it's still proportional. And y equals something times x, but then I have adding and subtracting back here. No. Okay? So just some examples of direct variation or proportional equations and what they look like. Okay, so let's flip it over and do a couple examples with these. So if I give you the equation, y equals something times x, y equals something times x, you should be able to find the rate because you're just going to pull out whatever that number is that's multiplied by the x, right? So we did this a little bit in chapter 3. The number multiplied by the x here is 16. The rate would be 16. Here, the rate would be this entire thing that's multiplied by the x, or the coefficient, the fancy name for it, the coefficient of x, is negative 2 thirds. Make sure you keep the negative with it. Here, the thing multiplied by the x, my rate is 0 0.27. And the last one, my rate is negative 6. So if I give you the equation, you should be able to pull the rate from that. Okay? What if I give you the rate and ask you to write the equation? Okay, well, if the rate, right, we said rates had per, right, 460 per person, I can just take that number and put it into the equation. Y equals 460X. And I don't have to label it in the equation, I can just write it like that. Or if my rate is 23 miles per gallon, Y equals 23X. Or if the rate is 17 apples per tree, Y equals 17X. And 20 pages per minute, y equals 20x. Now it's pretty important to also be able to determine what's x and what's y. Okay, So I'm going to go back to the front side here. We said the rate is always y over x. Okay, So if I come back here, I'm going to write that down, y over x for all of them. That means if I label this, my rate is going to be y per x y per x, or y over x, y over x, and y over x. So that helps me see what's x and what's y, right? In this one, y is money, and x is people. In this one, y is miles, and x is gallons. In this one, y is apples, and x is trees. And y is pages, x is minutes. So the way I get that again is by remembering that y over x is the rate. So when I label my rate miles per gallon, I can label it y over x, and that tells me which is which. Okay, the last little section here. Um, if I give you the situation and the equation, what does the number mean, right? So if I'm driving my car, the mileage I get in my car, y equals 18x. Well, driving your car, we talk about miles per gallon. So if 18 is the rate, then this means my car gets 18 miles per gallon. Okay, I can kind of see the rate is 18 and then label it in the context here. Or if your hourly rate is 10x, right, what you get paid, 10x, so the rate is 10, you get paid or you make $10 per hour. Or eggs in the muffin recipe, y equals 3x. Well, 3 is the rate, so it must be that it takes 3 eggs per recipe. Okay? So, we are going to stop there. We're not going to fill in this chart right now. That's the end of video 7, and we'll come back in class tomorrow and do practice with all of this. All right, thanks. Bye.